Battlefront lets you play as your favorite clones, AATs, rebels, stormtroopers, and two ATTs, your battle cars, from gunships in the galaxy. The Jedi Star Force. So without further ado, yeah, let's move on. Don't need any requirements. Ah! Oh! Oh, right lads, I'm asking up here. Sorry, sometimes the old videos come back to haunt me. So that does bring up the question. What game are we covering today? That does make sense, actually. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the second game under the Battlefront banner, made by the now defunct Pandemic Studios. This game's prequel is quite often hailed as one of the best Star Wars games of all time. But how does it hold up? Battlefront 2's campaign is incredibly different to its predecessor, as in it actually has one. Okay yes, the original Battlefront had a campaign, but had very little story to it, and was mainly just small skirmishes on multiplayer maps. In comparison, we have Battlefront 2, one of the most underrated Star Wars stories of all time. The concept here is simple, but works very well. You serve as a member of the 501st Legion of the Grand Army of the Republic, in the final battles of the Galactic Civil War. As the war draws to a close, the unit finds itself carrying out the will of Chancellor Palpatine, later to become the Emperor. You visit iconic planets like Felucia, Kashyyyk and Utapau, fighting in space and on the ground alongside Jedi like Ki Adimundi and Obi-Wan Kenobi. As the war draws to a close, you partake in Operation Nightfall, as you attack the Jedi Temple alongside Lord Vader, but I do find this level is severely lacking in dead younglings. As the Republic becomes the Empire, the 501st now finds itself in the armour of the famous Imperial Stormtrooper Corps, as you put down rebellions across the galaxy as part of Vader's fist, fighting in iconic battles such as Hoth, and on board the Tantive IV. But the best thing by far about this campaign has to be its cutscenes, narrated by Tamar Morrison, the actor behind Jango Fett and the clones in the sequels, alongside playing Boba Fett in The Mandalorian. These cutscenes are easily the most iconic thing about this game, giving a powerful insight into the minds of the clones during the war. Did we have any doubts? Any private traitorous thoughts? Perhaps. Gameplay wise, it's pretty fun, although it can be repetitive. A lot of objectives repeat over and over, such as secure a point, and destroy a random structure. Space battles are also thrown into the mix, which can be skipped, although why the hell you do this is beyond me. Oh wait, it's cause they're bullshit. Don't get me wrong, they're fun, but if you're playing this on elite difficulty, you're gonna encounter a lot of this. Your ship getting blown up as soon as you spawn. Like, oh cool, I didn't wanna fly my ship anyway. I feel these battles work a lot better in multiplayer than the campaign. We have a few different ships, fighters, interceptors, bombers, all serving different roles, either anti-fighter or anti-capital ship. Back to ground combat, we've got several different classes, basically the same as the original Battlefront, with standard infantry, heavy weapons trooper, sniper and engineer, alongside special units like jet troopers. Each class has different weapons and abilities. There's no real OP class besides maybe the jet trooper. Vehicles are also a large part of this, such as ATRTs, alongside mountable turrets, either already on the map or built by the engineer class. Heroes are also playable on each planet, Mace Window on Geonosis, Ayla Secure on Felucia, and Darth Vader on Nightfall. As stated previously, this campaign isn't easy. You are given a few respawns, and once you run out, it's game over. I love this campaign, but it's one of the few games that didn't make me angry, just disappointed. Multiplayer, the bread and butter, the ham and jam, the meat and feet, uh, ignore that last one, of Battlefront. The multiplayer here is easily one of the best, if not the best, of any multiplayer on the sixth generation of consoles, next to maybe Halo 2. Now as we've discovered many times, Xbox Live doesn't fucking work! So this leaves me with only one option. Playing alone. The variety of modes here is much more fleshed out than the original. On top of Conquest, we now have Capture the Flag, Hunt, and my personal favourite, Hero Assault, alongside the return of Galactic Conquest. Capture the Flag is what you'd expect. Capture the enemy's flag, protect your own. In Hunt, you play as a native faction, such as Ewoks or Rampas, against a standard force like the Empire, Hero Hunt. I've very much been looking forward to discussing this. You play as either heroes or villains, and take control of fan favourites like Yoda, Vader, Boba Fett, Han Solo, alongside some... odd additions. Ayla Secura. She has no lines in the movies. I'm guessing she was probably thrown in as her character model was already in the game, but still an odd pick. Both Anakin and Vader appear as villains, even though they're the same person. And finally, the weirdest addition of all, Asajj Ventress. This was three years before her appearance in the Clone Wars, and it's clear the developers had nothing to go off besides, hey, make her bald. Galactic Conquest makes its return, and it's better than before. The core gameplay remains the same, pick a faction, conquer the galaxy, but we now have features like buying abilities, units, and of course, playing as heroes. 
Besides that, it's largely the same. Gameplay is pretty much the same in multiplayer as the campaign. Units are the same, there's more vehicles, and space combat actually isn't bullshit. The focus is less objective based and more competitive. Multiplayer is just the campaign with more choice and less to more Morrison. The variety of maps here is also superior to the original. The first Battlefront had a much smaller set of planets, but with more maps for each planet. While this game does the opposite, having more planets, but usually only one map for each. Every planet returns from the first game, although Bezpin and Renvar had to be bought as DLC. In terms of newcomers, there's a lot to name. Coruscant, Dagobah, the Death Star, Volusia, Mustafar, Mygito, Polis Massa, Utpau, and Tantum IV. Not a planet, but still shows the huge amount of content added to this game. This game is one of the best sequels of all time. Yes, a lot of its content is taken from its predecessor, but the sheer amount of new stuff brought to the table here is hard to argue with. The original game was a fun experience, especially with friends, but felt like it lacked in content. Battlefront 2 improves on this in every regard, offering an even better multiplayer experience and single player offering. This is one of the best games of the 6th generation, and if you disagree, I'm going to guess you on the GameCube. And with that, my work for the week is done. Now I'm going back to being unemployed and having nightmares about my old videos. Why was I wearing a lampshade as a hat?